Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to take a look at the genetic origins of both the modern day Assyrians as well as the modern day Iranians. Alongside these two modern day populations I'll also be taking a look at the genetic origins of their ancient ancestors. The primary objective of this video will be to prove that the modern day Iranians as well as the modern day Assyrians have quite a bit of genetic continuity and there's also a bit of genetic overlap as well. I will also provide a brief genetic history of both peoples. What you'll be able to see is that the modern day Assyrians as well as the modern day Iranians are very close genetically and also have a great degree of genetic continuity since the ancient era, since the Bronze Age for the Assyrians and since the Iron Age for the Iranians. All autosomal breakdowns featured in this analysis are from Davidsky's G25 calculator. Davidsky does in fact utilize the latest available genetic evidence from Harvard and other major institutions who worked on population genetics and sequenced genomes. If you would like to see your results in the same calculators used in this analysis, please email me at irontalk95 at gmail.com and this is only if you have previously completed a genetic test with either Ancestry DNA 23andMe, MyHeritage DNA or Living DNA. Now without further ado, I'd like to begin this analysis. Up first, we have a map of the Neo-Assyrian Empire and you can see that the overall historic peak of this great ancient civilization was quite vast as it encompassed nearly the entire Middle East with the exception of parts of Anatolia as well as Iran. So this was a very large empire and you can also see that it did not really encompass over much of the Arabian Peninsula. Nonetheless, it was located in the center of the Middle East and encompassed much of the modern day Middle Eastern region. This was a major empire and as you'll be able to see that these people were very innovative and they completed a great degree of projects, particularly artistic projects as well as construction projects. But overall you can again see that the sheer vastness of this empire made it an ancient Middle Eastern superpower. And what's also interesting to note is that this empire was very militaristically powerful and had a strong military tradition which allowed it to expand across the Middle Eastern region. Thus, the Neo-Assyrian Empire was one of the largest ancient Middle Eastern empires. Now moving on, here is an example of the artistic uh, ambitions of the Neo-Assyrians and this is just a reconstruction of what the ancient Neo-Assyrian capital of Nineveh looked like and again you can see very detailed uh, constructions here and very intricate buildings and this shows the greatness of Neo-Assyrian innovations. Now here is a relief from uh, Ashurbanipal's palace so he was one of the most notable Neo-Assyrian kings and you can again see a very Middle Eastern phenotype perhaps even a Semitic phenotype and what this shows is that the Neo-Assyrians were very much a Middle Eastern population. Moving on I'd like to take a look at the source populations that will be used to break down the ancient Assyrian sample we have from Nemric from the late Bronze Age so you can see there's a Neolithic Iraqi source so this is the Iraqi samples from the Neolithic then there's an Andano Kazakhstan source a Neolithic Iranian source a Neolithic Caucasian source a Neolithic Anatolian source a Neolithic Levantine source a Bronze Age South Asian source an East Asian source and a Sub-Saharan African source. Moving on, you can see these are the results for the ancient Bronze Age Assyrians. So you can see they were on average 85.8% derived from a Neolithic Iraqi source, 8.4% Neolithic Anatolian, 4.2% Neolithic Levantine and 1.6% Andronovo. What's evident from these results is that on a genetic level the ancient Bronze Age Assyrians were very much indigenous to Mesopotamia with only minor amounts of ancestry deriving from other sources. Thus the ancient Assyrians were indeed indigenous to Mesopotamia. Now on the matter of the ethnogenesis of the modern day Assyrians, the Armenians from antiquity played a major role in their ethnogenesis. So this is just an Armenian manuscript from the antique period and it's very interesting and the Armenians from this particular era in history had a major influence on the genome of the modern day Assyrians. Finally, the last of the populations which only had a minor influence on the genome of the modern day Assyrians were the Arabs and this is a manuscript from the medieval period and you can see that the Arabs are attacking the Byzantines and again the Arabs were widespread in their invasions across the Middle East into North Africa and Persia and also parts of South Asia, Central Asia and the Iberian Peninsula. 
Here are modern day Assyrians and you can see that they have a very Middle Eastern phenotype which is quite interesting and these are the direct descendants of the ancient Assyrians as you will now be able to see. These are the source populations for the modern day Assyrians that I will be using to break them down. So you can see there is a Bronze Age Assyrian component followed by an Iron Age Iranian component then an Iron Age Hellenic component an Armenian antiquity component, a late antique Arab component, a medieval Turkic component, a Bronze Age South Asian component and a Sub-Saharan African component. Now here are the breakdowns for the modern day Assyrian population. So you can see their Bronze Age Assyrian answer ranges from 23.8 to 60% and the average is 35.4%. They are on average 33.5% Iron Age Iranian, 11.3% Iron Age Hellenic, 15.8% Armenian from antiquity and 3.9% late antique era. Thus what is evident from these results is that modern day Assyrians are mostly of Bronze Age Assyrian and Iron Age Iranian descent with a bit of Hellenic and Armenian ancestry as well and only minimal Arab ancestry and it is also worth noting that the Bronze Age Assyrian ancestry peaks at 60% in the Assyrian from Nineveh but in the other samples you can see that the peak is only 39.8% so what this means is that on a genetic level the Assyrians from other parts of the Middle East aside from Nineveh tend to have more foreign ancestry compared to the Nineveh Assyrians and this is quite interesting so what this means is that modern day Assyrians have significant foreign ancestry though nonetheless the Bronze Age Assyrian component is still a significant part of their genome. Thus modern day Assyrians are mostly derived from a Bronze Age Assyrian source though nonetheless a lot of them tend to have more foreign ancestry compared to the Bronze Age Assyrians which is quite interesting and remarkable. That's essentially it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at the complete genetic history of modern day Iranian population. So this will take a look at the Iranians of today from a very historical as well as a genetic standpoint. Thus, without further ado, I'd like to begin the next phase of this analysis. Now on the matter of the Iranian ethnogenesis one must look no farther than ancient Central Asia. So you can see this is a map of the Andronovo culture, the Bima culture as well as the Yaz culture. What's evident from this map is that you can see the Andronovo culture encompassed most of Central Asia though you can see that the Bima culture was at the southern tip of the Central Asian region and also you had the Yaz culture and basically the Yaz culture was the product of a hybridized population between the Bima as well as the Andronovo steppe pastoralists and it was ancestral to nearly all modern day Iranian populations. In fact, the Yaz culture was also ancestral to nearly all of the ancient Central Asian as well as Plateau Iranics. Now these Yaz Aryans eventually migrated to Iran and settled there and they basically settled in the southern part as well as the northern and the northwestern part and this formed the two major cultures of ancient Iran, the Medians and the Persians. While we don't have any Median or Persian samples, we do have a sample from the Yaz horizon and I'll take a look at that right now. Before I do that, here are just the source populations that I will be using. So you can see that there's an Andronovo component, there's a BMAC component, there's a Neolithic Anatolian component, there's a West Siberian hunter gatherer component, there's an East Asian component, there's an Indus Valley component, and there's a Neolithic Levantine component. Here are the results for the Turkmenistan Iron Age or Yaz sample, and you can see that it's on average 58% Andronovo and 42% BMAC. What this means is that on a genetic level the ancient Aryans who migrated around were the product of a hybridized population between the Androno steppe pastoralists and the indigenous population of the Bima culture. Thus you can clearly see that the ancient Aryans were indeed not purely of European descent and had significant Bima ancestry. Moving on, what's worth mentioning is that eventually these Aryan pastoralists hybridized with the indigenous Iranian population mixing with them within the plateau and they formed the Persians as well as the Medians. So this is just a map of the Achaemenid Persian Empire. What's evident from this map is that you can see that the Persians had a great influence stretching all across the Middle East, Iran as well as parts of South Asia and Central Asia which again is quite interesting. Now to understand the genetics of the population of Iran at the time of the Persian Empire I'll be taking a look at two sample sets from the Iron Age from northwestern Iran and while these samples are not directly ancestral to the modern Iranians they nonetheless likely reflect the profile of the ancient Persians and Medians.
Here is the source population that will be utilized to assess these populations. So you can see that there's a Andronova component, then there's a Neolithic Iranian component, a Neolithic Caucasian component, a Neolithic Anatolian component, a Neolithic Levantine component, a Bronze Age South Asian component, an East Asian component, and a Sub-Saharan African component. Here we have the results for these ancient Iranians. So you can see they're on average 15.1% Andronomo, 38.5% Neolithic Iranian, 14.9% Neolithic Caucasian, 16.0% Neolithic Anatolian, and 15.5% Neolithic Levantine. Now what's evident from these results is that on a genetic level, the Iron Age Iranians were a mixed population and were mostly of Neolithic Iranian descent, which is very interesting, though they did have a bit of Andronov, Caucasian, as well as Anatolian and Neolithic Levantine ancestry. Nonetheless, again, you can see that they're mostly of Neolithic Iranian genetic descent. Now the next event to significantly influence Iranian genetics were the expansions of Alexander the Great. And here is a relief depicting Alexander and you can see that he has a very Hellenic phenotype though this is much later and older depictions show him as having blonde hair and blue eyes. Now eventually the Parthians overthrew Alexander's successors, the Seleucids, and established another Iranian dynasty and this is basically the extent of the Parthians and you can see that it encompassed nearly all of Iran which again is quite interesting and this shows that the Parthians were very much well spread across the Iranian plateau. And here is a statue of a Parthian man and you can see a very Iranian phenotype. Now after the Parthians, the next major Iranian empire was that of the Sasanians and you can see that the Sasanian empire encompassed all of Iran and parts of the Arabian Peninsula as well as Central Asia and also South Asia. So what this shows is that the Sasanian empire was the last of the great Iranian empires. Now here is a bust of Shapur II who was one of the greatest Sasanian king of kings or Shahan Shahs and what's interesting is that you can see a very Iranic phenotype. Ultimately however the Sasanian dynasty fell to the Arab invasion so this is just a modern depiction of the Sasanians being conquered by the Arabs in their capital of Tesiphon. After the Arabs, the next major event which influenced the trajectory of Iran was the Turco-Mongol conquest. So here is just a depiction of the Turks and then moving on here is a depiction of the Mongols. And while you may think that these two had a major influence on the genetics of the Iranians, specifically the Turkic and Mongolian peoples, nonetheless, what you'll be able to see is that the Turkic as well as the Mongol contribution to Iran was at a minimal. Now the last of the major population movements into the Iranian plateau was from the Caucasus and these were primarily Georgians as well as Circassians and other Caucasian populations which migrated to Iran during the so-called Caucasian layer of the Safavid era. It was during this era that the Safavids imported hundreds of thousands of Caucasian slaves though nonetheless as you'll be able to see these Caucasians left a very negligible genetic influence on the genome of modern day Iranians. Now here is an image of modern day Iranian then you can see that they have a very Middle Eastern phenotype and this is primarily due to their significant Iran calcolytic descent which is quite interesting. So the modern day Iranians are mostly descended from the indigenous Iranian population though nonetheless as my previous analyses have shown they have around 20 to 25 percent ancestry from the proto-Indo-Iranians. Now to measure the ancestry of modern day Iranians, here is the source population that I will be using. So this will take into account all of the historic migrations to Iran. So you can see there is an Iron Age Iranian component, there is an Iron Age Hellenic component, there is a late antique Arab component, there is a medieval Turkic component, there is a Bronze Age South Asian component, there is a modern Caucasian component and there is a Sub-Saharan African component. Here are the results for the modern day Iranians. So you can see their Iron Age Iranian ancestry averages out to 83% and ranges from 63.4 to as high as 98.8% and their Iron Age Hellenic ancestry only averages out to 5.1% and then after that you can see minimal ancestry deriving from a late antique Arab source only averaging out to 2.5% but it does peak at 9.2% in the Laristani. Then you can see medieval Turkic ancestry only averages out to 3.4% peaking at 7.8% in the Iranian from Khorasan and then after that you can also see ancestry deriving from a Bronze Age South Asian source only averaging out to 4.2% and peaking in the Iranian Eastern Plateau at 12.4% and the modern Caucasian component is also minimal only 
peaking at 12.4% in the Western Plateau profile running, but the average is only around 1.4%. Finally, you have the last component here, which is the Sub-Saharan African component. And unlike the Arabs of today, the modern-day Iranians have this at a minimal, and it's only at 0.4%, with the peak being 1.4% in the Laristani. So again, the African component is minimal in modern-day Iranians. Thus, overall, what these results prove is that on a genetic level, the modern Iranians have around 83% genetic continuity to the Iron Age, which again is quite interesting. What this means is that the modern day Iranians have largely remained genetically contiguous. To conclude, this uh, analysis took a look at the genetic origins of the modern day Assyrians as well as the modern day Iranians and compared their ancestral descent from their ancient ancestors and proved that modern day Assyrians and modern day Iranians have a great degree of genetic continuity, though there is a bit of genetic overlap between the Iranians of today as well as the Assyrians, which again is quite interesting. What was also evident here is that despite the Assyrians having between 35 to 60 percent genetic continuity, their continuity to the Bronze Age Assyrians is much lower than the Iranian continuity to the Iron Age Iranians. Thus, while the Assyrians have picked up additional ancestry, the Iranians have largely remained genetically contiguous to the Iron Age. That's essentially it for this analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.